Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For any first time watchers, my aim here is to provide you with some insight into property related matters through informational videos such as this one to help you understand um, a bit more about the world of property. So definitely consider subscribing if that's your aim. In today's video, I want to explain what a valuation surveyor is and when you might need one because there may be a few times in your lives, some good and some bad, where you might get stuck and think to yourself, what do I need to do next? Or who do I need to speak to? From a property point of view, I'll try to explain the valuation side of things. So grab some hobnobs, strap yourselves in, I'll wait, and let's begin. What is a valuation surveyor? In a nutshell, a valuation surveyor is someone who values property professionally. This can be any type of property such as commercial or industrial, for example. But in this video, I'll be mainly focusing on residential property, i.e. houses or flats. But anyone can value a property, right? Technically, yes. But the difference between a professional valuer and a non-professional valuer is their accreditation. All professional valuers will have some sort of accreditation, such as charter surveyors, which you can distinguish by checking whether they have the initials MRICS or FRICS next to their name. This accreditation usually comes with a form of degree-based knowledge, followed by years of professional experience, training, and a successful um, assessment of professional competence. My mate Jimmy is an estate agent and he can give me a free valuation. Why do professional valuers charge a fee? Well, the answer to that is simple and it's because of professional indemnity. A professional valuer has to state their opinion of value and sign off a report which is then relied on for many reasons, such as calculating tax liabilities or for court proceedings, for example. If the valuer gets it wrong and it ends up costing the client money, then they have the option of taking the valuer to court. Whereas a non-professional valuer can just sit back because they are not part of the governing body that requires uh, professional indemnity insurance. So any advice they give isn't actually taken seriously. Now that we've covered what a professional valuer or valuation surveyor is, let's talk about the different circumstances in your life where you may need a professional valuation done. Shared ownership or help to buy valuations. If you haven't already, then definitely check out some of my um, other videos on these topics for more info. If you currently own a shared ownership property and you are looking to purchase extra shares in your flat or house, you will need a valuation surveyor. They will provide you with a report stating their professional opinion of the market value at that date. And then the housing association rely on that report to calculate the cost of the shares you are looking to purchase. If you currently own a property bought on the help to buy scheme and you are looking to pay off some equity or sell your property, then you will likely need a professional valuation which will be used to calculate any percentage equity remaining that you need to pay back. Capital gains tax. Some people will go through life and many will eventually decide that they want to buy a investment property. If that investment goes up in value and you sell it, you'll likely need to pay some capital gains tax on the uplift. The process is fairly simple if you buy and sell on the open market because the prices are determined by the market itself. But what happens if an uncle wants to transfer a property into another family mem member's name already owns a property for a mere sum of £10 because he's such a nice guy? And then that's split between three children five years later and then those children have an argument and want to liquidate the asset to split the money. Well, in this case, you'd probably speak to a solicitor to store out all the legal stuff first. But since the property hasn't been sold in open market, you'll likely need a charter surveyor to carry out evaluation at the relevant dates. In circumstances like the example I just gave, it's not uncommon for professional valuers to have to assess property values in the past. Also, valuation principles become very complicated, like for example, when the property is shared between multiple people. So if it's not done correctly, it could cost you a lot of money in tax. This is where paying a charter surveyor to value something properly, as opposed to getting a free estate agent's valuation pays off. Inheritance tax. This is probably the most difficult evaluations to request as someone who has just um, lost a family member. If someone dies and leaves a property behind in their estate, that property needs to be valued at the date of death of the person who owned it. This valuation is then used by accountants to calculate any inheritance tax liabilities. Since inheritance tax is one of the biggest tax hits in the UK at 40% above the tax-free threshold, it's definitely worth getting a professional valuation done. This is because a professional value will look at the property objectively and take into consideration anything that may lower the value of the property. Also, 
Other valuation principles may come into effect, such as accounting for a short lease or a share in a property, which estate agents can't do, and again, can end up costing you a lot of money in tax. I would say it's probably best to speak with a solicitor who deals with probate matters, who can advise on what needs to be valued. Then you speak with a valuation surveyor for further guidance, otherwise things can get muddled up or misinterpreted. Lease extensions. If you have a short lease property and you are looking to extend your lease, you'll likely need a valuation done. This is one of those rare times where you don't actually need a professional valuer to undertake this kind of valuation. However, it's still best to consult a professional as they will normally be better placed to give you good advice and get it right. I have come across scenarios in the past where people have used non-accredited valuers for lease extension purposes and it ended up costing them tens of thousands of more than it should have because they got the fundamental valuation calculations wrong. Divorce. These are known as matrimonial valuations. I don't feel like I need to explain why these are needed, but a Chartered Surveyors report is often required by the courts to determine a fair, professional and unbiased value so that the asset can be, can be split equally. One party can instruct a valuer, but then this can be disputed um, as bias. So usually one surveyor acts for both parties with a duty to the court. These reports are normally very, very detailed and be, can be quite expensive, especially if it's litigated. If the divorce is on fairly amicable terms, a non-court compliant report is normally requested by a judge. And if both parties agree to the figure, then the judge takes that as a fair figure and can be split in half. Rent reviews and lease renewals. This is for anyone who rents a shop or office space. When you sign up for a commercial lease, there may be rent review clauses in there at certain dates. This is when rent was reviewed and is set at the new open market rent, but normally it's upwards only. So if it's found that rents have fallen, they're likely to just stay the same. These rents are normally negotiated and often chartered surveyors get involved. Without a chartered surveyor, it may be very tricky to negotiate a good deal and could cost you a lot of money over the preceding term. There are probably many other times where you need a valuation surveyor to help out. And in fact, there's probably too much to name, but these are the most likely scenarios that the average person might come across in their lives. Always remember, if you're ever in need of professional valuation, look for a chartered valuation surveyor. And as I mentioned, they'll have the letters MRICS or FRICS next to their name. I hope this video has been useful and that you've learned something new. If you have, then definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing to keep up to date with my new content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at my next video.